that you have to pay over and above what your FCFA is. Thank you. Over and above what your FCFA is coming into. So, not only is 24 percent, you will come back and say, okay, if my FCFA is coming to, if my FCFA is coming to, let us say, 100 crores, my 24 percent will give me 24 crores, my 26 percent will come to 26 crores, but one sec. Now, I have to pay 26 crores plus something, which is actually 40 percent may go as plus 40 percent of this. Please understand this. It is all about control premium. The choice is left to how do you want to make your offer. Do you, right, this is how we probably do it. You know, give us 24 percent in your company, 100 crores. Give us 26 percent in your company, 150 crores. Choice is yours. The idea of dangling that carrot in front of the promoters is, the idea of dangling that carrot in front of the promoters is, he will fall the, fall the pitch and give us controlling premium, right. Some very big for names, they are very clear. They will not get into any company till they get controlling stake. Some smaller PE firms and smaller strategic investors are also okay with strategic stake. Please get this right. Case, when you continue this further, Mr. Vishwanath's company, if my stake in his company exceeds 50 percent, let us say, thank you sir, 50 percent plus one share, I can now pass ordinary resolution. I can now pass ordinary resolution. Mr. Vishwanath's company, my stake in his company exceeds 75 percent, let us say 75 percent plus one share. Then I am the <laughs> deemed owner. Why I am the deemed owner? Thank you. Because I can pass both ordinary and special resolutions. Structure your deal properly, friends. If you are inviting, I now sir is a dear friend. If you are inviting somebody, please be clear that you will offer him a strategic stake. If you are offering him controlling stake, sir, please charge control premium. And there, please note, beyond that, you will have to go into negotiations. You will have to clearly negotiate. With this plus value, no model will give you. Absolutely, absolutely. If it is a, a complete sell off, then these things will not come in. But if it is, uh, sir, no, uh, obviously PE also, but along with PE, even if it is a stat, uh, dear colleagues, if it is a strategic sake, right, who wants to take a part of the company, same concept implies, right. 100 percent sell off, right, it does not, it really does not apply. Yes. You have to pay senior. You pay a separate sum, not equity value. It can be a different amount negotiated. Which is which is a no compet and for him to step. Yeah. That's exactly what he said, say. No, but what you're saying is if we go through the totally uh, not a leverage one but an equity buyer. You that, that uh, we are both saying the same thing. Then that extra amount is being paid. Sarah said that yes, only he's trying to say you pay extra to the guy for whom you want to retain his services. Yeah. That's a point. Yeah, yeah. The same thing. There is an extra payment. See, please understand this entire thing, you have to also be careful when you do it. Please ensure that if you are dealing with financial in investors that you take care of two very, very dangerous things, sir. If you are advising your clients, please be very, very clear, sir. Please understand that, uh, especially since sir brought up private equity VC, let me tell you, private equity VC, their entire model is, right, uh, whenever you deal with them, please understand a private equity VC, their model is, I just rub this part. I want that to remain just to convey what I wanted to say. Their model is very, very simple. That is it, invest and divest. Their model is extremely simple, invest and divest. So here you have to be very clear. If at all you are going in as a strategic investor and <clears throat> then this will not apply. But if you are going as a financial investor whose modeling technique is, whose thinking technique is, I will invest and then I will divest. Then you have to take care of one thing. 
please ensure that there is a clause. Very important clause. This is known as ROFR. ROFR actually stands for right of first refusal. And this right of first refusal should be buyback by the promoters. Right? Buyback by the promoters. The first thing that you should do. So if you are inviting, if you are inviting somebody to come into your company, when you sign the agreement, there should be a clear offer clause that the promoters have the first right to buy back. Can I give you some very new uh, legal dimensions to it? A very new legal dimension to this is, if you are doing this with a foreign venture capital and the money that is gotten is in the term of forex, Reserve Bank of India does not like a ROFR clause because then they say this is not equity, this is a borrowing. This is the latest thing that has happened about a week back, three, four days back. Reserve Bank of India says if you are talking to a PEBC who is a foreign entity and that foreign entity is giving you forex, then this is not an equity transaction. It is like, okay, it is an ECB, external commercial borrowing because why? It is simple because a buyback by the promoter such that the investors get 18 percent, 15 percent. So it is predefined, okay, that first right is with the promoters who will buy it back at a price to give the targeted return and the targeted return typically will be in the range of 20 to 24 percent. So Reserve Bank of India is now saying if it is a foreign current, foreign denominated thing, then I don't think this is equity, this is an ECB because it looks like you are borrowing at 20 to 24 percent. But all domestic transactions, please ensure that, sir, please ensure that you have a ROFR clause. The ROFR clause is if you are having somebody who is going to come in and exit, then the first right of exit should be by selling stake to you. Sir, please should, <laughs> there are two sides of the spectrum here. So let me talk about the buyers here. Buyers, please note, you ensure that the guy on the other side will ensure the buyback clause. For you, it should be ensured that you should put this very, very clearly. What is your targeted return? Sometimes you allow the ROFR clause to come in without the targeted return. Then it becomes a legal dispute. And can I say something? Please don't put 20 to 24. Just put out a number. Then close it out there. Second thing, how these guys can, <coughs> how the PEBCs can exit is one is ROFR. Second is strategic sale. Second is to strategic sale. What is a strategic sale? Typically, a strategic sale, you should ensure that the, uh, the seller should ensure that the colleague who is inviting the PE and VC should ensure that in the agreement there is this NOC clause against the strategic sale. Why, Saraf, sir? Who would give the highest price for a company's shares? Thank you. Absolutely. And that is why this NOC clause. Thank you, Sanjay sir. And this NOC clause should be for any subsequent sale. Because you see, I have invested. So I am going out. I sell to Mr. Pillay, and he is not your competitor. You are happy. But then please don't, Mr. Pillay is now, let's say, after some time you realize Mr. Pillay is selling to Mr. X, who is your competitor. So that NOC should not be for the first tranche of sale. The NOC should be for any subsequent sales. Again, a legal thing that you should be clear. I have seen some of your, some of them ignore NOC. Some of them put NOC for the first primary tranche. Absolutely. So, so this is basically, this is to protect the interests of the promoters. Right. This clear case, promoters. So that the promoters do not end up seeing their shares, right, with the hands of the competition. This, if I can put it like this, this goes against private equity VC. So, moment you put these conditions, he will try to dip the valuation a bit, saying too many conditions on exit. So, who, your straight question, sir, is in whose favor? I am talking in favor of the promoters. And the third thing that you can do is, right, the P and VC guys, how can they divest by offering? What is the difference between, and now I think the time has come for me to ask, what is the sir? What is the difference between offer and issue? Okay. Offer is for an existing share 
Offer is, thank you. Offer is actually monetization. <coughs> Offer is monetization of investment. <coughs> Absolutely, Professor Asad. An existing shareholder, an existing shareholder is offering his stake, is an offer. Issue is when the company is issuing fresh shares. Your case, that's why I was chatting with you, sir. I was discussing, right? Issue, company gets the money. Offer, the exiting shareholder gets the money. I am talking of offer for sale and there you have to be very, very clear, friends. Please be careful about one clause in favor of the promoters. Most dangerous thing in, in right, and I am talking for promoters, most dangerous thing for promoters is this drag clause. What is a drag clause? A drag clause is, it means when the private equity or venture capitalist is exiting, if he wants, he can drag along the promoters along with him. So, let us say you have been very smart, you have given only 20 percent stake. You have given only 20 percent stake to the private equity venture capitalist. He is now exiting. He, he, he says, you want to buy back? You say, no, I do not want to buy back. He says, can I sell to strategic investors? You say, no. So, he says, okay, now I have identified somebody to whom I am selling. But the other guy is asking for 30 percent. But the private equity guy has only 20 percent. If there is a drag clause, he can drag 10 percent out from you and go and give 30 percent to the outsider. This is compulsory on the promoters. Drag means it is a draconian clause against promoters because it only means that when the PE or a VC is exiting, he can compulsorily force the promoters to dilute their stake, even if they do not want to. Better is, see, if you are, if the promoters are allowing a drag clause, my humble request, if the promoters are allowing a drag clause, then they should ensure that they get premiums. They should ensure that they should get premiums. Promoters, according to me, should try and avoid drag loss. So, what if the other guy asks 51 percent? Thank you for nodding. Then he will pull out 31 percent. Yes, he can. That is a legal case. Take some time out and please read out what is happening in the PEVC around us. You can read. It is all over the papers. Economic Times has uh, uh, reported it. Lily put. The big battle going on there in that company today. Better still, if you can't avoid. You mean the yeah. Big, big case. Right? The guy is now going across and saying, I want to have the drag cross. My only point is then, when the agreement was drafted, why didn't he not do a simple legal due diligence? You know, drag is actually compulsory on the promoters. So, in case Mr. Vishal, you are, a promoter is allowing it. He should ensure that he gets some sufficient valuation for that. Better still is just to avoid that because in the future you never know. Or you put a clause, drag up to so and so limit. That is okay. But that ordinary drag clause can mean that the guy can drag you out for whatever he wants. It is as simple as that. Better for the promoters is to have what is known as tag. Tag basically means, let me explain. This looks very similar. These are two very different things and they will really affect you. A tag basically mean the means the promoters are saying you are anyway exiting. The PE guy is anyway exiting. Along with the PE VC guy, we wish to offer some sale. So, let us say the PE VC guy is getting a or the strategic investor is getting a very good valuation for the company shares. Promoter may decide in his own discretion that array, the valuation looks very good. Now, I can also dilute 5 percent. I will get some money. This is the tag. Tag is basically optional on the promoters, where the promoters come in and say, excuse me, can I also offer my, some part along with your part? Sir, even if you get a discount on your price, it is better to keep a tag clause. So, tag means the market conditions are good and the price is, price is good. Promoters can also monetize their assets. I want to take this again one last time, right? Rofer, any strategic investor who follows invest and divest models, promoters should ensure that they should have a Rofer clause, right of first refusal, 
where the first right to buy back is with the promoters. Please note for foreign currency cases, for foreign currency cases, this is clearly taken as for foreign currency cases, this is clearly, clearly taken for foreign currency cases, it is taken as an ECB. So, as of now, it was allowed till one week back. Now, RBI is clamping down upon it. Otherwise, domestic cases, you can do it, no problem. Second thing is, if there is a strategic sale cross, my humble request to you is, in the strategic sale cross, ensure that there is an NOC clause. An NOC clause only says one thing, that he can't sell it to hostile, thank you, competitors, hostile How people. Long you monitor the How many sales have to be monitored? Right. It is for all subsequent sales. And sir, Prasanna said you should ensure that your MOA, AOA is worded in such a way that the right to block right, any new entrant is with your promoters. So, you, your entire memorandum and articles of association is worded like that. So, a very nice question. How, how much? Any subsequent sale. Except when it goes and lists on the public. When it lists on a stock market, then you cannot block it. Then it is freely tradable. Till it is listed, you can block. You can clearly block. Offer for sale is where the some shareholders are exiting. Right? There is a distinct difference between offer for sale and issue. Issue is by the company. Offer is by the shareholders.